Now before we can tackle a more complex shape, let's start with a very simple L-shaped plane like you see here. Now the goal is to take a shape very similar to this, but make it very high poly so that ultimately, whenever we bake normal maps, we have a very nice subtle bevel. That's our end goal. And to accomplish that, what we will be using is the Turbo Smooth modifier. Now if I go ahead and apply the Turbo Smooth modifier now, and turn up the iterations just a little bit, you'll get an idea of what's happening. The Turbo Smooth modifier is taking a calculation between the three edges that we have of the object at its lowest level. So for example, this edge here, this edge here, and this edge here, and it's calculating a smoothness that's going to go between those three edges to create this curved surface that you see. And so if I wanted to tighten up the edge corner here just a little bit, what I'll need to do is I'll need to go ahead and select the two edges along the side here, and I'm going to go ahead and right click, connect, and I'm going to add one extra edge here, and just going to pull this up just a little bit, and go ahead and connect and add one extra edge along the top side here. So now we have a much sharper edge, and if I go ahead and click on the Turbo Smooth again, you'll see that it's a much crisper edge than what we had originally had. And that's because these three edges now are the edges of control that we are maintaining using the Turbo Smooth modifier. And so if I go ahead and turn Turbo Smooth on, I can also turn on Isoline Display, which is essentially going to give us the exact same results, but the calculation is a little bit faster for your machine. And rather than trying to render, you know, hundreds and thousands of polygons as we get to a little bit more of a complex shape, Isoline Display can actually help speed that up just a little bit. So now if we take a look at this, this is getting a lot closer to our original shape. And in order to soften this up, all we would need to do is go ahead and take any one of these edges of control and soften them up just a little bit as well. And that's going to create a much softer bevel than that crisper one that we may be looking for if we were trying to mirror, uh, you know, sort of a higher polygon version of this shape here. So let's go ahead and take those principles and apply it to a three-dimensional object, such as this box that I have here. Now knowing that TurboSmooth is going to calculate its edge smoothing based on three edges of control, what we need to do is essentially go in and add our edges of control for every single one of the edges that maintains the silhouette of this box. And so to do that, we can quickly grab any one of the edges to start with, right click connect, go ahead and add two edges in there, and we'll go ahead and pinch those out just a little bit. Press OK. We'll do the same on all the sides that we need. Go ahead and press OK here, and we'll go ahead and ring right click connect and press OK. And so now if we go ahead and apply a turbo smooth, turn up the iterations, we have our nice beveled box using the edge control that we put in at the base level at the bottom of the editable poly. Now the last thing to remember is that if I went ahead and softened up these control edges just a bit, uh, I'm going to go ahead and grab all of these edges, go ahead and loop select them, hold down control and switch to vertex mode. I'm going to go ahead and soften up this bevel box just a little bit to give you an idea of what's happening with the control edges if I go ahead and pull those in quite a bit. So now by putting on the Turbo Smooth, you'll notice that it's considerably softer, which may or may not be the result that you're looking for. Um, but if we go ahead and undo that just a little bit, we'll get back to our original shape of our nice high poly chamfer box. Now when working with cylinders, the same rules apply. But if I go down to the base level and I go to edge mode, if I go ahead and select this top edge and then go ahead and press the loop key, 3ds Max isn't going to let me do that. Uh, but it's based on the way that the face is calculated here on this top surface. And so one quick and easy way to go ahead and grab this top and bottom edge selection is by first going into the polygon mode, grabbing both of those polygons for the top and the bottom, holding down control, and then clicking edge mode. This will go ahead and give us the selection that we want. And so the next trick that we'll do is if we go ahead and right click and click on extrude, this is going to add a couple extra edges, which is going to flare the edges out, which isn't exactly what we're looking for. But if we go ahead and reset the extrusion height to zero, and all we do is adjust the width, this is actually going to add those two edges, one on the inside and one on the outside, giving us our three edges of control that we're looking for. And so now if we go ahead and switch over to our Turbo Smooth, that's giving us the nice high poly silhouette of that high poly cylinder that we're looking for. So for this final shape, I have a simple plane with a little hole kind of beveled downward uh, into the middle of it. And to quickly apply some of the edge control, all we need to do is go ahead and remember, you know, looking at the silhouette, that if we want this shape to sort of dip underneath, we need to have edges of control along the silhouette anywhere that we want to maintain control uh, for the ultimate high poly object. So I'm going to go ahead and hit connect 
on that edge selection and just kind of slide these in just a little bit right along the edge because what we're doing is we want to focus on having a nice uh, edge of controller for this particular edge here, 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 and here. And so next I'll go ahead and ring select both of these. Go ahead and hit connect. And so by sliding this in just a little bit, I'll go ahead and ring select the inside part of the bevel. Go ahead and add two. And then this time I'm just going to go ahead and pinch it. I don't need to slide this up and down. So I'll just go ahead and adjust the pinch width. Go ahead and ring select that. Hit connect. And go ahead and press OK. Now at this point I could go ahead and hit Turbo Smooth and turn on my iterations and I intentionally left you know just a couple of them uh, just to kind of uh, iterate the point that you know it's always a good idea to kind of go back and forth uh, between Turbo Smooth and Edit Poly to kind of see what your results are um, and then you can kind of make adjustments you can say oh you know I, I forgot an edge loop there or or maybe I want to soften up something a little bit more uh, but it's always going to be a good idea to go back and forth so for this one I'll go ahead and hit connect and add that third one uh, for that inside lip there and go ahead and apply the turbo smooth there and that's going to give us a much crisper uh, nicer edge around the edges there that we're looking for and uh, that's looking pretty good so that about wraps up the basics of using edge control on these high poly surfaces that we've done so far here on these primitive shapes next we'll be using what we've learned and applying it to a stoplight prop and modeling out a large portion of the high poly elements that make up that stoplight